You're a sod. You were trying to get that <laughs> right at the beginning oh, of the episode. Oh, you just narrowly missed out there, listeners. Uh, Matt doing his warm up exercises, and that was... would have been. I'm just a professional, mate. <laughs> you, you, you are honestly. You just can't help act, even when we're you know, is mm. if, if, a face for radio, and you're still vocalising that. Peter Piper picked a peck mm. of pickled peppers. I like to wear mm. my Irish wristwatch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I'm warmed up. <laughs> Tiny Tim's in trouble. Tiny Tim's in trouble. Tiny Tim's in trouble. And his name is actually Timothy. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. dear Forrest, how are you, my friend? Oh, I am good, Matthew. How are you? I am just so sunny inside. Oh, so sunny inside. Can you tell by my beaming smile? I'm so sunny. I, I can look at look at it beam. It's beaming, mate. It's, you're gonna you're gonna hear it on you're gonna hear it. You're gonna feel it. Feel it on the radio waves. It's gonna course through your very soul, dear listener. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited because we we're about to talk about something that I've been waiting for us to talk about in a well since we started for starters, and also. We're getting really close to our first year anniversary. We are get we're getting close, right? We're getting close to our year anniversary, and also getting close to our fiftieth episode. Which oh. is like we're, I think we're like within like two or three episodes of it. Like, is it gonna come? Is it gonna happen at the same time as our anniversary? Do you think? Uh oh, mate, I don't know. Our anniversary is hey, in we'll May, find, isn't it? We'll find <gasps> out. We'll find out. We'll, we'll find look out. it up. We'll look it up. Imagine that. what on earth that Amazing. would just be. What a spectacle! Oh, uh, anything happened in your your week, Forrest? That's worth sharing. <laughs> give, give me an anecdote before we start. <laughs> Go. Sharing is caring. <laughs> uh, I uh, yes, I went to Norfolk at the weekend. That yes. was lovely. Went to Norfolk, the sun was out, mm. um, my guns were out, the, mm. swan, the swans were wondering which way to go, to the left, to the right, you can't see this, so it probably don't make sense. It looks um, really nice. Do you go there a lot? Do you go there a lot? Uh, a yes. Thing? Yeah, yeah. So Sophie's family has a place there, a, little, a cottage. It's beautiful, oh. beautiful cottage. Um, and uh, yeah, we went for a walk. We did. We just had a proper chill weekend. We I had the first barbecue of the year, which wow. which is steady on. Oh, honestly, Matt, that we had we had prawns. We wow. had peaches with like like peaches are done in like this weird. Oh, it was awesome. It tasted peaches, incredible. Peaches, 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 <laughs> peaches. Sorry, it's in my head. I went, that's what I did this week. I went and got. I went and saw Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> really good, by the way. But, yeah. Sorry, go and carry on. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get out of my system. I had to. It, like, triggered me. Every time I hear Peaches, I hear that song now. I wonder if that's... And dear listener, I wonder if you've, you're the same, if you've seen it uh, or heard the song by Jack Black, but it's literally in my brain. <laughs> nice. Um, peaches, yeah, uh, and prawns. Mm, really want to say it. <laughs> go on. Peaches, prawns. And burgers. There's not another P. I wish there was. Um, oh but yeah. Gosh. Oh, is it? No, there wasn't. Was there burgers? I've made that completely up. Chicken wings. Uh, mate. There chicken was chicken wings, wings in like marinated and a beautiful sauce. Honestly, man, it was just. You went out there. Like, hey. you didn't go for like a traditional barbecue for the oh. first time of this year. You went, let's just go crazy. Let's yeah. barbecue some peaches, which yeah. I've never heard in my life before. Not, nor an I, but, you know, Sophie's brother will absolutely, you know, if he ever listens to this, fully commend you. 10 yeah. out of 10 uh, to him and his partner, Rob, for, for the sheer effort um, of the oh, peaches. Mate. They were incredible. They were a party piece, mate. The party piece um, peaches. <laughs> so, um, do you know what? I, I, I tell you what, I wonder whether who we're about to talk about is peaches might be their favourite fruit. And do you know who that might be? I, hang on, you haven't told me an anecdote first. Oh, I don't need to give you, you my anecdote. You can't, you can't try and worm your way into a segue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think that was, and that was reaching as well. That was like proper reaching that for, was, that, for a segue. That was very far. But you could say that mm. by doing that, you were being mischievous. Oh, well, 
and you time. know who the little god of mischief is, isn't he? Is he a god? Yeah, yeah, god of mischief. <laughs> That'd be nice. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Woo! Okay, was that our intro? <laughs> We're talking about Loki. <laughs> I just wasn't sure. I just wasn't sure. I was like, do I do an anecdote? Do I do a little bit? I don't know. It's Loki, season one, my dear listener. Um, we're going through episode one. We're going through episode two. Oh, we're going through episode three. Okay, and <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, oh, I don't know what it's just hit me with. <laughs> I'm like filled with adrenaline. <laughs> yes. oh, I need to calm down. I knew you were going to get excited because Loki is absolute your like this is your creme de la creme of he's great. This I mean, is your tip top man, tip top Marvel. I mean, I know it's not our Loki. We're looking at a, technically a different Loki, for, um, you know, because our Loki, if we're going chronologically here, our Loki has passed on, let's say, uh, but we go back in time to find our Loki during Avengers. Uh, the first Avengers uh, to then go into a different timeline, effectively. Uh, mm. Hence why he is a variant, and hence why he starts this whole story. But yeah, Tom Holland, uh, Tom Holland, Tom Hiddleston um, is absolutely cracking actor, mate. And I've always loved his performances as Loki. To be oh. fair, in a while, and I'll be quite honest here, mm. right? I think he's one of the most consistent performative kind of mcu characters out there yes you know what i mean like he delivers yes, yes. pretty much every time he's on the screen yeah i can completely i can completely agree uh and also like, i think kind of what i what i got out of what you just said as well is that he consistent in in the means that the character has always stayed true to the to the to the character right the writing yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Tom's acting. It's always stayed true. Like we've never once seen a film and gone, "Oh, that's a weird." You know, yeah. Thor. There's been been many a variation, even within MCU, uh, with Chris playing it. Um, whereas you can, I I think it would be hard to argue that. Uh, it, all, all you can say is that you know there's some uh, because I th I think also what what I love about um, Tom as well um, playing Loki is that actually he what he doesn't do is go right Loki was a bad character yeah. and now he's a kind of anti-hero positive good like I don't it's not it's so it's not so easy column A column B right no. it's a bit he always blends in that kind of actually he's done something good but there is always a potential <clears throat> that he's done it for the wrong reason he gets the balance right in terms of yeah, yeah. he is the god of mischief, okay? So therefore, there is elements there to be a villain, to mm. be comedic, to show compassion, to show empathy, to show revenge, to show this glorious purpose he keeps talking about. You know, the, the maniacal side of Loki. There are so many different aspects to the character. And he delivers each of them. And you could say, you could, argue, you could, make, you could make the argument that that's maybe too many for one character to play. But ultimately... The amount of strings that are added to his bow in his journey as Loki from the beginning up until this point, mm. it's it's quite interesting. What I really enjoyed, and we'll talk about this later, is kind of how he went back to the glorious purpose Loki from the first Avengers movie and to see this develop um, later on. Um, but overall views, mate, what are your overall views so far for episode one to three on Loki season one? Overall views, I like it, I love it. Um, I think that there are certain moments of 
kind of like, oh, okay, this this scene could have wrapped up much earlier. There is again these these are reasonably long episodes that could actually yeah. have been the length of a She Hulk episode. Yeah, everyone kept going on about you know we've talked about it before and we haven't even got to She Hulk really, but we have done an episode where we talked about it and. Everyone kept going, oh, She-Hulk, the length of the episodes were too short, blah, 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 blah. But with this kind of story, with the Loki story, you would have got to the heart and the content of it um, without any scene that goes, oh, fucking hell. Like, some of the scene, you know, there's a scene, I think, in episode two, for instance, with Mo, uh, with Morbius, where it's just not it's just not needed. Like, it's almost not needed. It's you know, like, what? They're just talking now. Like there's no, you know, very. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there's incredible detail if you're listening really careful when you watch other stuff and you compare scene for scene. But that's not. That's, that doesn't add anything. Yeah, it. yeah, I agree. I think there was a moment. I think in episode three for me where I was like, no, oh, I can sense that this is going on for too long. This yeah. could have been a shorter episode in terms of what was actually going to happen and what we see what saw was going to happen, and that kind of, you know, storyline with that. But I think, uh, yeah, for me, overall, love it. Really great series. It's adding to uh, the main narrative as well, where we're going with Phase 5. Um, so it gives a lot. It shares a lot. Um, so, yeah, I, like, I've really, really enjoyed Episode 1 to 3. And as watching it again has been really, really enjoyable. Um, just so you know, I, like Thea and Haley are on my watch today. Nope. So this could be chaotic. And she's already... Making an appearance. She, like, she has waited five minutes. She's been oh, waiting. bless her. She's... Oh. Look what she's wearing. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That, I mean, that is... This is real footage we've got here. Look at that. We've got Iron Man here. Iron Man's just arrived. Kick-ass Iron Man. I feel, I feel like you're about you're doing um a little uh, call back to Megan in Endgame. Oh, my God. When she yes. stole the helmet. Oh. <gasps> Look at I this. Know. With the helmet. I... <laughs> With the <laughs> helmet. I got the helmet. Are you Iron Man? Are you Iron Man? No. no. What are you then? Banana. You do what you don't know. Banana. <laughs> okay. Well, I love you 3000. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> Oh, what a conversation. What a two-way conversation. Thank you it? for your cameo there, Teach. Oh, that is. Thank you very much. But yes, I like the series. I am enjoying it. Um, but shall we start at episode one? We we should. We should. We should. Start? We should. What was We us? should. We should start with episode one. Um, where we, you know, I'm, we're not going to pick it to absolute pieces and go for every minute. But we do start in New York in 2012. Uh, and I think I, I saw it and I thought, Christ, that is that segment, right, of the first Avengers Assemble film is uh, it, it's an end game. It's in this. It's mentioned like how, it really is mm. the pivotal of the MCU. Right now, yeah. now we're going back. I'm like, Christ, like, that that single film and the events of it are mentioned in it, almost every single Marvel film. Right? It's, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because it I can now understand why people that don't watch Marvel hate Marvel. Yeah. Because if you just start, if you wanted to start watching now, that means you'd have to go through twenty four plus movies and now TV series as well in order to understand really the full um, mm. storylines and narratives. But equally, it's beautiful because it's what we're building our whole podcast on. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. What we can talk about, like so for us, it's amazing. But yeah, like it does make you realise like they are really using the after effects of Endgame as a premise to tell more stories going beyond it. And God, that's a lot of trust, isn't it? In a product mm. as well. Um, but I, I, that, you know, that's the golden thread, isn't it? That's the golden thread. So I, what I really love about this is that Loki season one brings new things, but mm. it's also, it, it plays into the narrative of the movies. It plays into what's going to happen in future movies as well. Um, but yeah, like the first episode, we find Loki from Avengers Assemble. Um, he obviously, we see at the end of Endgame, yeah, he goes, takes the port, takes the Tesseract, port was his way out of it. And then we see him flying down into a desert to then be immediately 
absconded by the TVA. Um, the and Gonite, the kind of, the Gonai Desert, the Gonai in Desert, Mongolia. Just Mongolia. To be, just to be very specific, there. Very yeah. good. It's really interesting. I, I wonder. He must have done that instantaneously and not really knew where he pulled himself out. But that yeah. must have that gives me the impression that you can control where you portal to and from. Yeah. With the Tesseract. Um, so he takes that, obviously, and he gets into the TVA. We see the sequence of him being initiated into the TVA as well as a variant, as a kind of a prisoner in a way, mm. um, to be then judged, trialed um, and sentenced as well. This whole sequence I really loved because what was great about it is that we immediately got into the aesthetic of what the TVA looked like. Yes, completely um, agree. So it's in it's really out. It's really different. Like it reminded me of Ragnarok, um, where Thor goes to meet the um, Jeff Goldblum, the um, oh the the grand the Grand Master. Yeah. And he and he's in that chair, and you just see all these lights, and just it becomes so fluorescent and sort of, sort of eighties sort of like uh, fantasy vibes and poppy colours, and then that goes straight into a new kind of world, and you see it, and you're in, you're initiated into it, and that's that kind of reminiscent for me with this bit of Loki. We get this kind of new, muted colours. It's brown. It's orange. It's kind of beige um but also i get i get fallout vibes so i'm a massive uh, fan of the fallout oh, games yeah. from bethesda right and we have um the clock who is played by miss minutes is played by tara strong oh now miss we we see miss minutes and we get an animated um explanation of the tva which i think is brilliant but it just reminds me wholeheartedly and must be completely lifted from fallout because that's exactly oh, yeah. how fallout tell with um the pit boy with yeah. using that and telling the story of the fallout that's literally how it's used so then it must be lifted from there miss minutes gives me massive fallout vibes and i wonder if you dear listener feel the same on that yeah 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 no at, at miss minutes what i really love about that and the and the first video like you said that we see uh, to describe the TVA, it it literally tells you everything you need to know that you yeah. don't know about this place in yeah. one solid clip. It does exactly what I um, kind of enjoyed. Um, wasn't done in the same way, but I liked uh, with Wonder Vision. It was really done. It was you know uh, through the sitcom vibe. You instantly knew that we were not in reality. Uh, mm. We were, you know we were in Wonder's reality. Um, so it was, it was really good. It's just really you know, like a small. Uh, cap, yeah, small piece of of um, film that just told us everything we needed to. And and I think with something like the TVA can naturally be quite a confusing. Con I mean, whenever you're telling a story that's about time mm. and about multiversal time periods and uh, correcting those kind of things, it can immediately be, immediately be something that's quite confusing for an audience to try and grasp. Mm. So immediately doing it through come some some sort of self plan self explanatory, sort of jovial, kind of even sort of ignorant animation. Yeah. It's it's like, okay, this is this is what we do for dummies. Mm. You know? Um and I think that works because uh, that again you go oh, okay cool for that's what you do so you protect the sacred timeline got it okay you got these timekeepers okay cool fine all right yeah. got it I'm there I'm with you right um, and then it doesn't it doesn't jeopardize Loki's journey journey as well no. um, again so going back to kind of Tom Hiddleston's kind of delivery on this we he still is Loki on his glorious purpose why am I here I'm Lo Loki the god of mischief you need to treat me with some respect. So seeing this being played out with the fact that he's literally being manhandled here, he's going from place to place, being forced to take a ticket and queue. Like, it's really funny. It's really funny to see him being forced into these situations. Um, what do you think about his outfit? Just, I mean, this is really random, but like the fact that we don't see Loki in Loki's outfit and he's in this kind of like uh, cool, you know, when he eventually gets his jacket, but he's kind of, I don't know. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I quite like. Oh, but before we just before I mention that because it, it kind of moves into uh, him getting changed is that sequence where he goes through lots of different like levels, doesn't he? They, yeah. Like make him naked initially, then he gets some clothes on, then he has to sign like this document as every word he's ever said. 
right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of these different requirements that he has to do. Um, and and there was kind of a... Um, I had a weird moment where it felt quite Harry Potter-esque. And it, it, yeah. in the sense that it was kind of like... Um, like all of these, it f- it felt a bit like the um, I can't I remember what the ba- it, it Gringotts Bank or is it, isn't it? Or oh yeah, 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 yeah. In Harry yep. Potter, uh, the bank, and it because you get all of these like w- like wonderful different characters and all of these really like Wes Anderson style rooms with the colours are really like you know f- quite just strong aesthetic and and a really clear. Um, it's just you know one that's used in every room and and mm. different small spaces. I quite like that. Small spaces. That's that's one of my notes that I've put in terms of the aesthetic. Mm. Like everything feels really small and compact until you kind of have those shots of you get those wide shots of the TVA in the middle, but you get these really small cubicle esque kind of rooms mm. and the, the, there's the way that they do they, the way that they shoot it is they do a lot of kind of like under the chin shots to make it feel quite compact a lot of close-ups um and again with the colors it, i don't know rachel was saying when she was watching it with me that she felt trapped mm. when she's in the tva which is kind of the whole point right you're trapped in time right you're trapped because you've you've created you know uh, a, a variant timeline and now you've you you've been you got to be punished for those crimes those are crimes against the sacred timeline right yeah. so you're it is a prison you are trapped and i think they kind of play that really well in terms of the way that it's shot the way that it's played as well and also the music mm. uh, so i found there's a lot they use a theremin in music in, in the soundtrack so a theremin is like this long tube and you can sort of like put your hand next to it and it gives different frequencies of sound. So theremin's used in a lot of classic sci-fi um, music. Doctor Who use it quite famously, I think. Um, and it gives me that Doctor Who kind of vibe as well. You know, mm-hmm. it, um, I, I mean, the mu- I think this, and I've got to say, the music is flipping brilliant. The mm. epicness as well. There's one particular sound um, song that they use in repetition that is just so dramatic and brilliant. Um, who compo- Who was the composer? Just that I might. I will need to know. Who's the composer? Who, who is the, co- the composer? Who is the com- Who is this? Composer's the music. Created by music by Natalie Holt. Oh. I tip my hat to you. And Natalie Holt. Yeah, well fun. done, well Fantastic done. Fantastic work, Matthew says Natalie. Lovely work. Fantastic work. Um, um, yes. yes. So small, you know, um, the, I'm trying to think of the word, but the kind of uh, mischievous side of me would say that uh, although the set is, you know, very clever, feel trapped, I would also say that probably saved Marvel a pretty penny. Oh, 100%, to film yeah. this series must have been pretty yep. dirt cheap because yep. there's you know in these three episodes very in a little way of cast you know very small sets very you know even when they go to different periods they're only ever in one scene when they go to one area when they go to these places so you know Money financially wise, I think this was quite a, a very good series. I imagine they paid quite a bit to have Tom in it, so they had mm. to shriek, um, back the costs elsewhere. But, uh, yeah, no, it plays itself really well. The TVA areas, um, going back to your question about the costume, uh, costume about what he's wearing, um, I, th- I don't think I don't think it matters, I think because. Also, what you what I consider quite clever about that is that we're about you're about to embark in lots of different Loki variants who are all wearing different things. That's true. So, so actually, Loki, Loki, our Loki has to be stripped of his identity because we're about to be exposed to millions of other lo- like where he's not Loki. You know, mm-hmm. there are there are lots of Lokis. Mm-hmm. Um, so actually, by getting rid of his outfit, we can see just how Reg- like regular he is like he's yeah. not as special as he thinks he is right which kind of plays into his ego so I think all of that really plays into the fact that they strip him of that identity I like um, 
I, I now you've mentioned that actually it's made me change my my view on it because originally I was like oh it would have been nice to have seen some sort of like Loki esque ness to his costume but like actually to be because it's quite iconic that's the thing yeah, that's, yeah, why, yeah, exactly. that's my argument um but to be perfectly honest that's a really really good point you're going to get all these variants and you're going to see different types of loki's anyway so and you need to make that differentiation i suppose um so yeah good point good point there forest oh yeah thank you very much Matthew. done my mate um can we talk about the introduction of wow owen wilson wow wow Wow, this mommy is wow. <laughs> I wonder if he hates that. I I don't know. You do, you don't you don't really. Uh, I love him though. Absolutely, honestly, Wedding Crashers, one of my favourite. Oh all -time films. my god, that movie is what? so good. It is actually hilarious. It's I think you know like iconic com um, comedy th films. You know you've got Anchorman, Step Brothers. Is always yes. up there. Step Brothers is, you know, for me, Shaun of the Dead, but it's a completely different world. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but up there has got to be Wedding Crashers. It is. Can you, can you believe Bradley Cooper is in that movie? Oh, he, doesn't he play like the, the he, sister's husband or something? Yeah, he like, plays the dickhead. Yeah. Yeah, that like is I, when I when I come back to watch it, I always go, "Oh my god, that's lit! That is Bradley Cooper! Like, it's proper young in that movie as well." Wedding Crashers. Can we make that a wild card, please? I think we absolutely oh. should. Can we? Can we do "I Love You, Man" as well? Because for me, you, I love man. you, man. Oh. Paul, oh god, Paul Rudd in that movie is so so funny, but it's such a good movie. It's a classic comedy oh movie for me. Oh my god, genius! Yes, yeah. but we're not. <laughs> yeah, but we're not. We're not talking about that. We're talking about. <laughs> We're talking about Loki. But I think it goes to show, right, mm. MCU ultimately can cast absolutely anyone to put mm. into their universe. Because let's be honest, if we, let's say, for instance, we go back to Iron Man 2, right? We're cool. just about to start phase two. We're in there getting excited about the MCU. And if I went to phase two, Matt, watching Iron Man 2, going, look, do you know one day Owen Wilson's going to be in the MCU? I would have been like... <laughs> whatever that's gonna kill it <laughs> be like, wow yeah wow <laughs> you know it would absolutely kill it you wouldn't have ever thought oh no. wilson would be a, a good fit for for something like this but actually mm. oh my god him as mobius in this is so good so good yeah. um so we get so, so mobius is an agent for the tva he his you know, would, you know a lot of what's kind of spoken about in terms of the initial relationship with loki and owen wilson is that um Mo loki and mobius is that what is their purpose so loki is trying to find out what his glorious purpose was and it gets shattered in front of him mobius is on a special mission to find uh, a mission a, a variant of loki that is currently creating a shit ton of different timelines um, and cannot find and abscond them because they are kind of dodging um the timelines as they kind of try and chase them um, so there's this really lovely, we don't really get that immediately and understanding that immediately until later on in the episode, but you can see immediately the, the, the relationship that is forming between, uh, Loki and Mobius is, is this kind of kinship immediately of kind of going, what is my purpose? Well, my purpose is this. And Loki questions Mobius's purpose of being, okay, you work at the TVA. Loki and Mobius start this kind of relationship. We find him go into this interrogation with Loki. He shows him, I think it is episode one, isn't it? Where he goes back into the flashbacks, shows uh, his past. It, yes. It is yes. that, isn't it? Yeah. We'll try, yes. Yeah. Because that's when we understand that um, uh, we understand better that the TVA can travel in the future. Yeah. They can show timelines in the future, timelines in the mm. yeah. Yeah. And it's so we see in the, um, quite immediately Loki is quite resistant to this. Again, this is something that we need to understand as well is that this Loki isn't the same Loki that we know from, you know, Endgame from Infinity War. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if this was the Infinity War Loki, they would have been, I think, a little bit more empathetic, a little bit more understanding, but immediately they fight back from it. But I think the kind of what the MCU and the writers I need to commend on this is that they didn't spend too long on that. 
I think they could have spent absolutely ages with us with a dickhead Loki trying to f gain some empathy, some to gain some compassion, all of the things that we have learned from the character's development from mm. our previous Loki. They do that in this sequence where they go and tell his story and go, this is what happened to you in the future. This is how you, this is how you saw your mum die. This is what you did. And then he goes back to it later to then watch his own demise from, from Thanos. And the, the moment where it's a really great close up of, of Loki, where you, you hear the snapping of the neck from mm. Loki and you see his reaction. The eyes widening, he takes a gasp, there are tears in his eyes. And it's that moment we go, mm. boom, that's our Loki back with us. Yeah. He, uh, in that moment, he understands that he's not immortal. He goes, oh, oh, I do die. And this is what happened to me. And, you know, how, you know, and, and it, it humbles him immediately. So that's what I really like that because it allows us to go, okay, there he is. He's back. He, that's our Loki, you know, kind of thing. Mm. Um, and he, we, he sort of catches up with us. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. And do, do you think it's um, the fact that we get that at the end of episode one of a six part series? Do you think that's a bit upsetting? Uh, I I liked that because it, cause it then allows us to tell the story that about the, the variants and the time variants, and Nexus events and all that kind of stuff mm. for me personally, but I can understand what you mean. Well, because uh, and by that I mean that actually, for me, I, I feel that having this alternative Loki, because he, because he watches that, you can argue, well, okay, so he's caught up. By the end of episode one, right? Whereas yeah. actually, we could have learned about the TVA. We could have learned that, but Loki didn't watch all of that until we're later in the series. So yeah. actually, we can see him and Sylvie play out, him and yeah, Mobius play out without without him having this kind of extra baggage that he then that he then gains. Um, I feel for me that would have been more of a it provided more of an end point in the last couple of episodes to be like, mm -hmm. look, you know, this is, you're teaching yourself a lesson. Uh, that's, that's fair. I can, I, I can, yeah, I can understand that actually. The, do you know what, actually the other thing that kind of, in terms of gripes for ooh. episode one, mm. the main, I, I have a gripe about what is effectively being memed and gift and used as reels a boatload post this series. It's the fact that we see these infinity stones, appear from the 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 drawer of this um tva agent that's well that assistant admin assistant whoever it might be mm. but he opens the drawer to find literally a whole tray full of infinity stones and i know the purpose of this is for us to go that you know there are bigger issues out there than yeah. a bunch of infinity stones but i feel like that undermines the journey mm. that everyone's gone through all yeah. the superheroes, all the characters that I've gone through, you know, up to end game. Because that's what it was all about. I felt like it, I don't know, it, I don't know, it just kind of took the power away a little bit. I know that was the point because that's what the whole glorious purpose with Loki was. It was like, oh, it was nice to see the reaction of like, oh my God, what? Yeah. Yeah, we use them as paperweights and just throw away line. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, there's a bigger thing out going on out there. I, I I I know what that is, but equally it takes the power away of what we've gone through. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I can agree with that. I, I would have also, I think, and there's a uh, a gripe that I've got um, is um, and it and it's around another joke with these people that work for the TVA, and it's around um, uh, Loki. I think offends him. Does he call one of the guys a fish? Yeah. Yep. And when he calls, um, sorry, so, I sorry, I mate, just sorry. Yawned massively. Yeah. I just talked all the way through the yawn and pretended that, that absolutely never happened. There. Uh, are you bored for it? If people listening would have been like, "What the fuck?" Did it? you really enjoy yeah. this series? And, then, <laughs> and um, and and he said something about a fish, and then the whole yeah. joke is that he's never heard of a fish, right? Yeah. Which I was a bit like, "What? Is it? what? Hang on." For me, there was no reason why. He, Staff members wouldn't know what things are. I'm no. like, I don't really get that as a as a concept. I think and there's a. Oh, 
Go on, no, go on, no, you go on. You go on, I'll it, it in, you go on. Because go on. what I would have liked is you've got the TV screen of the kind of branches, which is really like a really good illustration of that multiverse, you know, the dangers that if, you know, that one singular line goes into loads of different directions. And But I, w- I would have also liked it if, if they'd have been more tuned in with what is going on in the in the various in in the universes, various universes, yeah. because then you could have had an opportunity where like where in real time you're seeing like you know how they've done it in other series where you get like news bulletins and then yeah. you on a tick you get a ticker that's like full of information and that's yeah. where you want to look as a viewer because normally it harks to like other episodes or other things. Yeah, yeah. Because for me, I would have had a. At some point during the series, they they watch that Loki sees this TV screen and it shows what's happening to his friends in real time, um, and and then on the ticker you you could get like Kang references before he rocks up at the end. You mm-hmm. could get references to like other comics in other universes. Like yeah. it, you could have just made it. That was a really good opportunity to really show how big this thing is. Um, and and rather than using Infinity Stones to go, oh yeah, there's bigger bigger fish to fry. There's bigger fish to fry. And, and <clears throat> going back to that fish line as well, I wonder whether that's going to play into a little bit more of how these people got to become part of the TVA. Because mm. obviously there's this question around Mobius and how he's a TVA agent. We will learn, I think, a little bit more about that either in the later episodes or in the next season. Mm. <clears throat> um but yes, I'm I, I I'm with you on that. It's I don't know. It just feels like they they just kind of they had an opportunity there to tell us a little bit more, and they just decided not to. So they must be holding on to something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I can't remember it. I because it's more it's about timekeepers later on in this series. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if it's less about the staff, but. Episode two. Episode two. Episode two. Uh, Morbius. Mo- uh, Morbi- oh, I'll keep calling him Morbius. Mobius. Uh, and Loki's relationship. Um, um, and we, we see their kind of dynamic throughout this episode. Uh, Mobius really kind of uh, has this kind of trust of, of Loki, rightly or wrongly. Um, I did put him, I think, about midway, and not a lot happened in this episode, really. Like this, this episode for me is like, really? yeah, because I feel like you know we don't meet. Um, uh, oh my god, we don't meet Sylvie in this episode. We see her. We see her. We see what she's at doing. At the end, right? yeah. Oh yeah, we see her right at the end. Oh yeah, we do see her at the end. Meets a woman, Loki guys. He's going to... Yeah, yeah. Well, at yeah. the end, we meet her. Um, but but it's all very much like what what is to come without very little oh yeah we're going to leak this bit for you and there and there it, it's a hell of a lot of mobius and and loki talking and a lot of yeah that. that's true there is a lot a lot more development i suppose with mobius and loki in terms of like i was saying earlier like in terms of getting there mm. <clears throat> their narratives across and their objectives of what they feel like their purpose is mm. um and they kind of they go on like they, like literally they sit in the library and try and search for stuff through the timelines they have that moment with pompeii which is quite nice Mm. Um, and I, do, and I, I re, what I do like though is that they go um, so they kind of uh, they get told of Nexus uh, it's Nexus energy don't they mm-hmm, and Nexus mm-hmm. events and then they go to that random periods of time uh, where Sylvie what we, uh, we come to know as a Loki variant is there and ca- like causing causing mischief literally uh-huh. um, so they kind of go to these and what I did like is like when they're going to these different places at so one moment they're going to like a re- recreation of a you know a, a, um, a t- historic fighting what do you call that it's like la- uh, oh uh, um what the gladiating battle I don't know why I've said yeah. that. Yeah. But it is that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because they're not it's not an actual one, is it? They're recreating it, aren't they're they? They're recreating, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I think they are, aren't they? Well they go to Pompeii, don't they? They do that they in the go second Pompeii. episode. Yeah, yeah, they go to Pompeii, but they also go to the the fighting one. It's the oh, one the with the tents. The yeah. jousting. Yeah, that's not oh 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 yeah, what is that called? But aren't they? They're not actually jousting, they're cos- though, are they? No, cos- they're, cos- they're cosplaying. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. larping, isn't it? What? Is it, LARP? is it live action role play? That's it. It is larping. larping. Yeah, you're right, mate. It's larping. Right. 
There you Sorry, go. took me too that's, long to figure out. What, I, I was gladiating. What the heck am Gladiate. I saying? Gladiating. Gladiating. <laughs> Gladiators. Um, yeah, no. So I like those bits. I like the Pompeii bits. Um, uh, I like I, I, the w- weird thing with the supermarket at the end. Like, I can't really quite understand why uh, it's there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I completely right. That's what your, you said. Your focus is uh, your focus is completely with what's going in the room. I had there, something mate. going on you, with it. Yeah, occasionally Matt will mute himself, and he'll be lucky because I'll have plenty to say. So by the time <laughs> I finish what I'm saying, he can get straight back on track. That. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. That's all right, mate. No worries. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! It's all right. It's unfolding now. It's unrolling. It's unraveling. What did you say, dear Forrest? <laughs> Sorry, dear listener. I'm folding. Um, I said, it, what was weird was the supermarket at the end. Yes. You know, yes. Why are they there? Have I, do, is... Oh, my gosh. I have got the best little Easter egg to give you about that bit. Oh, oh shoot it at me. Shoot it are at me. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So, the supermarket, dear listener, I'm sure, dear listener, you're a, a well educated Marvel fan, so you're going to know this. <laughs> but it me. says Rock's Cart. Now, Rock's Cart is a reference to <clears throat> the energy company that is called Rock's On. Okay. Now, Rock's On is a company that uh, is kind of like Stark tech kind of stuff that's created by a guy called something. His name is something Rock's On. You've got makeup on. Amazing. You look fantastic. Thea, do you know about Roxon? He's talking to Thea. No, she doesn't. Not, she's not me. No idea. Um, <laughs> Roxon um, is in the Miles Morales game, if you haven't played it. Mm. And it's part of the main storyline. But like Roxon Tech is an energy-based company that kind of literally effectively like energize and power the whole kind of town and area. Mm. So I get the... Uh, I get the suspicion that this is in New York. Yeah, I don't think I. T- I don't think an actual location is disclosed. No, Rocks on Energy is in New York, um, and it's in 2050. So this is quite ahead of time as well. I think, and this is what my suspicions are, is that we're going to see Rocks on Energy be introduced in the next Spider-Man movie, in Spider-Man Four. Um, and then when we get to Miles Morales, that's when it really goes with Roxxon as well, because that's where those storylines and comics lie as well. So there's a really lovely Easter egg in there for me with that kind of part. It's all Roxxon energy. And, and is, is that connected to Maria Carter? Don't know. Potentially? Because I know. didn't we... we say as as she was on the phone at the end of... Um, Captain. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, Falcon with the Soldier. Yeah, yeah, and she's on the phone, isn't she? And she's saying, "That's a good oh, point." Loads of gizmos, and if that's the next kind of villain esque, then maybe that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Maybe it might be linked to that as well. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how we're going to introduce Roxxon and and growing that later. But like, it goes to show as well how powerful Roxxon is. So it's the energy source that Roxxon is providing that powers the tempad, that powers the portal for her to get out as well. So it's that was you know that's Sylvie's home base as well. So it goes to show how powerful it is from a TVA perspective as well. But yeah, you're right. It is a bit. It is a bit contrived. It's a bit kind of like ooh, secretively. But you get to understand, I think, what quite nicely about Sylvie's powers that she can inhabit other people. Mm. And control them like that zombies. That was great. That was a cool scene. Um, it's pretty cool. I think that kind of doesn't that start? Yeah, that starts episode three, where um, yes. Sylvie kind of overtakes, overtakes Sylvie um, uh, powers. Pow- oh my god, what word am I trying to find? Because <laughs> powers and well, they kind of are, aren't they? But they, yeah, it- she lulls Hunter C twenty. Uh, she like gets into her mind basically. Yeah, it's not she? enchantment, is it? I mean, it, it's it's it's. Well, yeah, actually, I, she does call it enchantment, doesn't she? Does she? Okay, it is, well, it maybe is it is then. Explicitly that, I think, because she <laughs> she, oh, <laughs> she just specifically says enchantment. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not that. No, it is that. Oh, okay, no, she, she does. She does say that to Loki. Yes. Uh, <laughs> see, um, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> 
and it, yeah, but I love that when they were kind of they were um, Sylvie and Hunter C are in this scene and they're drinking cocktails mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it, and then you're like, oh, hang on, this is gonna this is going away that I didn't you know didn't think it would go. We're getting like cocktail drinking and it's oh. like boom straight in with the how many people are guarding the timekeepers. Yeah, like, and it goes to show that he can go into this, I say as a Sherlock term, but the mind palace the of a mind person palace. that's protected. But again, it's it's giving you an idea of these memories and human memories that they work for the TVA. Are they being, have their memories been erased by the TVA so mm. they can work for the TVA? But yeah, it's interesting. It goes to show how powerful Sylvie is. It goes to show um, that there's different types of powers that these Loki variants can have as well. Not all the same. That's a nice little touch, I think. Because I think that could have got boring. If it was literally... If they literally just went with Tom Hiddleston playing all these different variants. But no, they've gone for properly the name, the same kind of narratives, but just different elements. Whether that look, whether that's a look, whether that might be yeah, a physical change or uh, uh, through their powers or, let's say, enchantments instead. Um, but yeah, I think, what are we on? Are we on episode three now? Did we just Ep- move on? Episode three, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think th- there's, there's some, I'm, I'm a, I don't know. The, when they go to Lament, the, pa- mm. the when they get to Lament and everything's very purple and it's 2077, they uh, accidentally, through some quarrelling with our two Lokis, uh, the temp pad is broken um, and they have to try and solve the temp back pad, pad to get back. But they're stuck on Lament and it's currently about to be completely destroyed by another moon that's incoming. Now, the purple aesthetic, mate, mm. it, re- it almost gave me a headache. Yeah, it's, it's a bit rank, isn't it? It's a and bit it, rank, and it and it kind of plays into the ch- like the cheap vibe of the series in terms of look in in yes. places, not everywhere. No, you're but in right. Places, it kind of plays into how can we do this world in the cheapest way possible. There's one particular shot where it's quite a wide shot when they jump off the train. Mm. And there, and Sylvie's in the background, and I think Loki's walking. No, I think it's the opposite way. Sylvie's in front, Loki's at the back, and they're following. And he's following her. You can just see how much of that green screen that is, and how yeah. much of a a, a a non-finished visual effect that was. Yeah. Um, which I think is a bit of a poor form there. Um, it sort of disrupted it a little, a little bit for me. Um, but we also we find out that Loki um, just prior to that moment, we find out when they're getting drunk and they're having a drink on the train that Loki has had male and female relationships. Mm. So Loki what? bisexual is that yeah. is that a thing? Was that um, yeah. interesting? I, I'm they, there was um, when this but, first happened, there was a bit of a call out about okay, that's fine, but then why are you just saying it now? Why wasn't it told? Yeah, just... and, and people were going mad over it, and it was like, oh, like the most important thing about the episode. Mm. And it's like, yeah, it kind of wasn't, though, was it? Because we've never seen anyone he loves. We've never, you know, we never, like I said, never heard of it up till now. It's a passing fleeting comment. Mm. Like, it's kind of, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really know what, what you know, what any of that conversation added that because it feels like a really shoehorn moment that they it is and what i worry is that marvel added that moment because they knew it would gain a reaction and therefore get some press for them right i i worry that that's exactly why they did it because in the moment of the conversation there is no reason why loki would have said because it starts off with loki going talking about love um are you uh, who like are you with someone but why would he why would he give a fuck He's yeah. got. They've got so many other things to discuss, to talk about. and so many things that Loki's trying to achieve. I, I don't even. And the, and from, I think that yeah, no, it is. That's the conversation before he gets plastered, right? Before he gets drunk, starts dancing around. Because after that, then they have to go basically. But um, yeah, I, I just really it irked me because I feel I felt like that was just that was just purely right wrote in in order to to gain a little bit of interest i i really hope it was a cons- a consent a, a conscious decision in the writing with the intention to explore that further mm. i i'm like that that interests me as a character decision that interests me as a character narrative but like honestly my argument is why didn't you say that why didn't you do that from the offset yeah he yeah, is yeah. the god of mischief but ultimately how much of a 
you know how much that's i don't think that's at his first that's more of a thor thing do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, yeah, thor's yeah. more passionate thor's more got that kind of uh bravado about him that kind of uh yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of eye to be to, to to more kind of being aroused by other people like i don't get loki being that kind of person no but i don't yeah i i want i wonder too i wonder whether that was just done deliberately yeah yeah it's it's weird but 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 then you know but then you you are what what is the kind of what are they exploring mobius and loki you know it is and that's proper reaching because there's nothing that absolutely you know shows that to be but for a reason why they've said it or why they've done it and then you you have to look at season two is the first glimpse of season two that we've had in an end credit is mobius and loki um and mobius has this kind of like like i say he has his utmost trust for loki even though despite everything he knows about loki he's you know he try he always fight you know fights for his best cause in episode yeah, two yeah, yeah. so you don't, I don't know i don't know like i say it's reaching but that's the only reason I can see why they thought it thought it necessary to to add that and uh, not add that before. Is that actually they want to go? You know, it, they, they you've got Sylvie where logically viewers can go, oh, oh, you know, Sylvie and Loki seem to be getting really close. Oh, mm. and then they can and then they can pull the rug and go, oh, actually, you know, well, like, it's the person is... you least expected. Not, I know, but I don't think it will bring any more interest to it. But anyway, shouldn't they? Know. Shouldn't if they work to do that with with Lo- Tom Hiddleston's Loki? Sh- wouldn't they have made the variant of Sylvie a male, and then there would have been a potential love interest between a male and a male? Well, I I, I think uh, yes, but I think what they what they should have done was not had the line in because for me, what what you want to do as a writer is you want to. Um, you want to um what's the word you know expectation you want to go against it whatever that yeah. word is um expectation you, versus reality yeah mm-hmm. yeah um subvert expectation that's right this is what i'm trying to say yeah um so w- w- people are going to expect that the sylvie character male or female is going to be the character that our loki is going to become interested in because the amount of time they spend together, um, how they've how they put that character in, uh, and lots uh, in lots of reasons, right? Mm. So you subvert that by then going actually it's not it's not that character you thought it was. It's going to be this this Mobius character um, mm. that you least expected, and the love will begin will will begin and be sparked from the Mobius character, not the Loki character, yeah. right? That subverts all kinds of expectations. But in order to do that, you can't have that, like you just said, you can't have that line in it. Otherwise, you might as well have made Sylvia a man and and, 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 and change that. I, I think so, ultimately I they're know. playing into a, th- uh, a target audience that very much base themselves like on fan fiction, on theorizing, mm. on relationships with Loki. Like, let's be, remi- let's be honest, we've done some fan fiction on Loki. We've done some oh. fan fiction on Thor. <laughs> there is so much out Whoa. there. So they know, they knew that they've played into it. They've leaned into it. And the fact that they're leaning into this, you know, we'll get, we'll need to talk about this, obviously in our second part of this series. And our next episode is about mm. the love interest and the kind of the relationship that builds between Sylvie and Loki. I and mean, ultimately they are each other's variants is that okay or is it i don't know what is that um so we need to talk about that but yeah i think um one particular bit i just need to mention as well loki when he sings when he's drunk he uh, i think he learned a nordic song that so when he's talking in a different language i think that's just i think that's genuine nordic uh folk singing which Mm. is pretty cool um but yeah that that for me really the only thing i really really enjoyed in episode three and it felt like i like i said in the beginning of the episode it dragged on in terms of length the mm. ending sequence where they go to that neon town in uh, in lament and they try to get onto the ship and they don't manage to um that that kind of whole sequence of the explosions the chaos happening around them them trying to run away them fighting off the uh, lament soldiers um, and it all kind of happens in a few shots, and it's really, I think, quite cleverly done in terms of following them as they go along. I quite enjoyed that as an effect and as a way of shooting drama in action. 
But that is it. In terms of episode three, for me, and I'll be honest here, out of the three episodes, episode three is my least favourite. Oh, okay. I, I think episode one is really good. Episode two is, yeah, it's good, because there's, there's quite a lot of Easter eggs in there for me to enjoy. Uh, but episode three misses, misses quite a bit for me. Uh, okay, so I I would actually mark them a little bit differently. So I, on, I think I think episode one, three, mm. then two. Okay. I think two okay. for me okay. is weaker. I feel, um, yeah, I, I think it, episode three moves it in the direction that it needs to go for the rest of the series. Episode two, I think, just like serves a Mobius and Loki purpose um, that ultimately you would have got anyway because they spend enough time with each other throughout the series, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, they, you know, you've got Owen Wilson, so you know Mobius is going to be a key character. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel, I feel, I feel like episode, yeah. But Fair then, enough. But there are moments I liked in episode two. I don't think any episode is, is a bad episode. No, I think you're right. I think again, we we kind of with with Falcon and Winter Soldier, we knew which ones were bad episodes oh, quite clearly. God, Do you know what I mean? Bad episodes, yeah, but yeah. with this one, I think there are generally quite strong because the because the narrative is strong. One division was the same thing. Mm. Even if you had a, a slightly kind of misstep in a certain episode, it was still enjoyable because it furthered a plot that was interesting and engaging for us to follow and enough for us to follow not oversaturated like falcon and winter soldier um mm -hmm. there's one particular character we haven't spoken about in terms of the actress um is sylvie uh, which is played by sophia de martino um mm -hmm. an unknown face generally speaking let's be honest if you're casting owen wilson in your show um and even uh people that we're going to see later on mm -hmm. um like um uh richard e grant um uh, and and uh, who else? There's somebody else that's really w well known. I don't know, name escaped to me. Other than Jonathan Majors as well, which we need to talk about next week. By the way, we do. There's been some development on Jonathan Majors. We do indeed. Um, quite major, yeah. Unintended um, developments been our next episode, but um, yes, we we know. Uh, what do you think about Sylvie? Any thoughts? Quite yeah, really uh, really good. Um, yeah, really good energy. Uh, I think it's quite nice. What I, one of the things I enjoy about episode three is there the actual. I enjoy when I see on screen a relationship between two characters where you can see that the actors gone, or, yes. or, or at least that's where you 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 yes. portray that you can see right yep. and and what i love about those two those two, two characters is that it beca it looks really clear that they got on yeah, like they really you, know, you can really see they got on they bounce off of each other got a good spark um i can imagine they brought her into the room with with tom for auditions um at some you know second third auditions to kind of you know work together um because they just back yeah just the energy is really good and i think that's that's ultimately what was really needed um, i think you get that yeah. sense generally with a lot of everybody that's in this show mm. so far that i've seen everybody seems really like relaxed focused and you can tell that there's uh joy i think in in everything that they're doing and people really you can tell the narratives are being told really nicely as well and it's paced well it's mm. paced well. As much as I'm saying the third episode felt a little bit too long, but generally every scene was paced quite well so far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are those those are our thoughts. Episode one, two, and three. Bish bash bosh, there we go. What are your thoughts, listeners? What do you think? Do you enjoy it? Are you enjoying it? Well, let's be honest, when we did MCM <laughs> you just reminded me, MCM nice. Comic Con when we went last year, mate. Yeah. And we interviewed people, most, I'd say a good chunk of the people that we saw either cosplayed from the series and also said it was the best thing that they've seen in MCU. Yeah, very true. Very you true. You know, which is, I think says a, it's, it's, there's a huge fan base out there in terms of Loki fans. Massive. Mm. Massive. Ma massive but, but I'm looking forward to watching the rest of them. This is, again, my second watch. You haven't seen this, have you, as well? Yeah, no, I have. I have oh, you have? Yeah, this is when you seen have. this, yeah. 
of course, of course. So but I'm looking forward to watching episode four, five, and six in two weeks' time. Because what are we doing next week, mate? We are two weeks' time. What are we doing next week? No, next aren't week? we're meeting up. Next week is our monthly news round oh, yes, episode. It is. So fancy, so new, so new that I forgot it existed. <laughs> oh yes, yes. So we were, yeah. Now I got you. I caught up. You we caught were up. talking about Jonathan Majors big time next week. We were. Um, we've got. I think. Um, but by the time we get to that podcast, I wouldn't be surprised we've got an official announcement. Ha, absolutely, I think a lot of whirling rumours mm-hmm. going around. Uh, Deadline are involved, and when they start with the rumours, they tend to be true. They tend to go so. out and be confirmed. Um, so there'll be a lot of information coming out on Jonathan Major's situation. Um, and listen in next week, dear listener, on that episode where we'll go. We're talking about that. We're also going to be talking about the final teaser trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy oh, 3. We'll yes. be talking about that as it comes along as well. There's the also Marvels. Some- the Marvel's okay. trailer came out this month. There's all kinds of things that have been sort of developing as per usual. So we'll make sure we talk about that. Um, and also, we'll, what we'll do, actually, Forrest, and just so you know, so I can hold myself accountable in this, we're going to make sure we put ourselves out on a reel, on a story, to get your thoughts on things that have been going on. Um, and maybe we can relay that back in next week's episode and give some shout-outs to some other amazing content creators. Oh, yeah. It would be awesome to hear what their rumour of the month is, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. What's rumour of the ru- month. Rumour of the month, I would love to hear. There's a little tidbit for you there, my friend. <laughs> I like a, that. Sneak a little tidbit. Oh, yeah. Sure, oh. Okay. okay um, um, today's yeah. podcast, we've done more voices than we have in any other podcast. <laughs> I uh, we, Some may have been offensive. And <laughs> for that, for that, I can only apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, Wilson, wow. Wow. I'm in the MCU. Oh, wow. that's so great. Wow. <laughs> Hello, this is uh, this is Kevin. Um, oh, don't. Hello, don't man. bring him back. <laughs> Hello, man. I just want to... Uh, I've emailed you several times this, this week. You keep ignoring every email, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll email you anyway. <laughs> Amazing. Right, well, dear listener, thank anyway. you for listening. And again, as per usual, dear listener, if you've come to the end of this podcast, just want you to know right now, you have the best day. I want you to seize it. Mm. I want you to grab the day by the absolute cones, okay? And I want you to pull on it. And I want you to go, it's mine. The day's mine. <laughs> yes. You do, like that. do it. You... Yeah. And watch what your kids are screaming in the background. Yeah, I could Good hear luck. it. Good luck with that tonight, bud. Thank and, you uh, so much. I'm, do you know what? I'm really surprised chaos didn't ensue. So it might now, because now I've said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I'm I'll leave you with what's going on. Ta-ra for now. Bye, Bye. my friend.